be good to go. Great. Welcome everyone to our next episode of uh, Office Hour. I'm glad to have you here today. So uh, updates for the week, I just jump right into it. Uh, uh, we received some queries related to Google Analytics and a lot of agencies have been receiving information from Google stating there have been changes in universal analytics that they should migrate. Uh, there have been a lot of questions around how to migrate if you have not migrated already. I'm sure some of your web teams, if you're into web development and you have a separate team who's managing your own website, or if you're also managing client website, they might have thought about it already. But uh, Google sent, started sending out these notifications last year. Uh, they mentioned that starting July, I think they mentioned that starting July last year, they stopped, they are going to stop processing universal analytics data. That was July 1st, 2023. And uh, all customers will lose access to universal analytics interface and API starting July 1st, 2024, which is this year. I'll send you the information that Google has sent across along with the resources link. So what really happened? Uh, Google launched a new version of their analytics tool, uh, the free, free one primarily uh, that we are dealing with, uh, that I'm aware of. Because of all these uh, new measures that the European Union was taking related to data privacy, et cetera. Uh, universal analytics, as we all know it, we have been using it for years. But why did we, why did they need to launch GA4, which was not ready for prime time? Uh, let's call it as that. Uh, it was buggy. There were a lot of information missing. It was not user-friendly at all, at all, but they had to release it in the market because of all this pressure for related to privacy matters. To make things work, a lot of people who are not accustomed to it uh, found it very difficult to drive any kind of meaningful insight. Anyway, uh, if you have already migrated over to GA4, uh, then the next step would be to think about how you are going to back up your information, back up your, the data that you have for your own website or for your own agency website or your brand website. And if you if you have a bunch of clients and work work on their website as well, you may need to help them back up their data as well. The cutoff date, unfortunately, is July first, twenty twenty four. As for Google, they are going to delete all universal analytics data, and you won't be able to access them starting July first, twenty twenty four this year. So we don't have a lot of time. So if you go into Google Analytics uh, web website, you will find a lot of information related to migration and how you can export uh, CSV files, you can export information to uh, BigQuery, you can even use the API to extract the old information. Just keep in mind that BigQuery, if you don't use it correctly, it can be fairly expensive if you're working with large data sets. There are simple services uh, if you if you do not have a team handy and you or if you do not have the time to do it yourself, there are services like this that I found uh, analytics canvas that basically uh, can create views and help you export the information for a reasonable price for a one time cost. You can give them a shot if you know what you want. Otherwise, uh, if you do have the resources and time, I would say use something like BigQuery or Luca Studio uh, and, and try and back up your data. We have a lot of data going back to, to the last 10 years or so. That's the reason why it, at SignUp, we are using something like BigQuery to back up our information. But you can give this a shot. Let me know how it goes. I will be sending across uh, more resources uh, for you and your team to look into uh, by tomorrow, okay? Uh, as, as always, if you have questions or need help or have uh, specific pesky issues that you're unable to deal with related to Google Analytics, just, just shoot us an email. We'll get on a call and figure out what to do next. Okay, uh, 
now that's that has gone out of the way uh, there was a new update uh, recently if you guys are doing local search ads on google uh, you will notice there's a new button that that we also found uh, i was looking for three to mobile services in new york and we saw these uh, local search services ads or service providers listed when i click on the get phone number option on my laptop or desktop computer i get this neat little view uh, modal that pops up with the scan to call option uh, which i think is very useful especially when you're not searching on a mobile device and it's difficult to jot down phone numbers uh, that's something new that we noticed uh, just get rid of this uh, next update uh, when when covid struck uh, and everything seems to be falling apart uh, especially local businesses for the brunt of it there were a lot of talk about businesses moving online google moving everything online uh, that local businesses are no longer relevant local is no longer relevant this is a future yada 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 but data from the past year or so uh, suggests exact opposite of what is happening okay there are some businesses who have explored uh, the online medium they are still doing it okay you discovery is still happening online but a lot of relevant keyword searches for bigger terms have started showing localized search results okay and they are just not localized they are hyper localized for example they're showing uh, i see we, we we have noticed a lot of keywords that show that that are showing granular information related to cities even neighborhoods down to a locality that's the reason why i think it's very important that you localize the content on your client website or on your website you are serving a locality and see how it goes we'll we'll come back to that uh, localized content again in the next slide okay okay another thing that we noticed uh, i think this was sometime in march that people started noticing it i started noticing it one of the uh, one of our uh, google business profile so when you go on to search and look for a brand and you get this interface the new search interface for while dealing with google business profile is an option to add an amenity or amenities map to help customers in your area uh so when you click on it this is what you'd see uh, add an amenity map to your website use google maps platform to show um, nearby amenities on your website select from our different types of places such as restaurants parks parking areas and more simply copy paste the code to your website get started at no cost okay we have to figure out the cost implications because nothing apart from google my business profile nothing else is free from google and when i click on this it basically goes into google cloud console asking me to choose the neighborhood and actually curate local highlights confirm design and export start report that can be embedded on a page honestly i think it's a great way to add uh, hyper local content on any given web page uh if you have a single if you're dealing with single location businesses or even for your agencies i think there is a great way of finding hyper local content great way of promoting that on the website and not just the map write about it in in the text format and uh, that way users will find it very useful and beneficial i think they they, they provide a bunch of api metrics related to it so you can explore it i will provide the link uh, in the deck so that i can play around with it i'm going to post some play around with it and try to implement it on one of our client website and see how this goes again you just go to your search for your brand name or your client's brand name just go to your google search and just scroll through these options and you will till you find that add amenities map <laughs> next step 
Yeah, so I was talking to a bunch of clients uh, last week. I think I spoke to Jane as well about certain customers not ranking well enough. Okay, I can understand why they don't rank. If their website is not ranking in organic search, they might have not, uh, they have not, they might have not optimized their website or they might have, if it's a new client, they might have not created a lot of uh, content relevant to their categories. But that does not always explain why we are not ranking in uh, local search results or or even in local finder. Uh, then I started digging deeper, okay? Uh, for example, uh, especially in areas where there's very stiff competition, for example, uh, the service near... Look at look at these search results. Okay, this is what I usually do when I try to get an understanding of the competition in a region and find out what kind of brands or what kind of businesses are ranking, etc. So, if your client has a generic name and they provide more than one service, okay, they 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 do services uh, they they also specialize in snow removal services or the contracting uh, for example this specific client san diego tree service contractor he's ranking i uh, and if you notice all the names uh, they're all in tree removal service primary category as three service and they're all ranking well and if you see the pattern they all all have their major keywords in the business name Yes, unfortunately, it's still a, a huge ranking uh, marker for Google. Uh, it, it, having your business, uh, having your major keywords in your business it matters a lot. So if you have basically optimized their website to the fullest, you have enough reviews, you have optimized their business profile with images, you have added services, you have added products, and you are still unable to move the needle in terms of the local ranking, okay? It might be time to take a different approach. And there are a couple of things I would suggest uh, that you can do legally. Do not just go in and plonk a bunch of keywords into your business name. Uh, your listing might get suspended, for all I know. Make it legal, okay? Uh, I think setting up a new DBA for the business is one way to go about it. Make sure you include the primary keyword in the DBA without being overly spammy. Stick to one keyword. Do not, like... Do not add something like uh, weed maple contracting, tree service, snow removal service, payments service, everything. Don't, 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 don't do that. Don't, don't spam. Just create a DBA for that new business. Create a new business uh, profile for them. Uh, mention that information on the website. Make it official. That way you will have the documentations uh, to prove uh, to Google that it's actually a genuine business with a genuine DBA. Uh, there are times uh, you your client might foray into a new business in a new state. They do not necessarily need to move the business. They can also create a new DBA in a new state. Uh, I'm not sure about the exact cost implications, but uh, uh, I think you guys, you guys are smart enough to figure that out, that part out. But I had a few clients do this, try it, and it, it did work for it. Should I do it for everybody? No. You should not do it. Uh, this, this shouldn't be your first line of thought uh, while in taking a client. But when you're doing basic, uh, going through your basic checklist to find out uh, during, during the time when client fills out the client intake form, provides you all the details, and you are doing a feasibility study, if it is possible for them to rank, is it possible for you to move the needle? then this could be a potential solution. Another problem that I've seen uh, uh, with, with a lot of local businesses is uh, location is of prime importance. I get it. 
But if there's a huge amount of com competition in the same road or the same street, in the same area, uh, you don't want to get a business office in the same area right away. If you are, if you, if you belong to the same category of businesses, uh, uh, if there are, if it, especially when the same business has more than one location in the same city, okay. If you are in the same area and it's like. Uh, the same business, it would be very difficult for you to get both of them to rank. Then you might uh, consider suggesting to the customers that they move to a different area. Okay. So Google has this uh, 200 yard or so filter that if, if same business type within the same area opens up uh, two different stores, uh, they will basically filter one out. We have noticed this with our clients as well. So so during those times, you may consider have them move and find a find something nearby, uh, or or use a different address altogether. Third thing, business relevance. We were just talking about localized content, right? Uh, so we know uh, location is of prime importance. We understand this is an ongoing task. Is 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 for the long haul. There's no quick fix. Uh, proximity matters. How, uh, how, how, how close are you to the search? Search you're searching for the search query. But how do I improve relevance of my business through content on the website? A uh, few ideas, a uh, few things that you can implement and uh, make it part of your uh, implementation guide or checklist, uh, especially. Uh, if you're doing a lot of content and website for your clients, uh, have a dedicated section for completed projects and associated results. Okay, uh, talk about them, write about them. Uh, you can have one page where you that acts as a landing page of the completed projects and results, then link them individually uh, to their own project specific pages. Okay. Like, like like us B2B providers who do case studies, consider these as case studies or uh, customer feedback. Each of the project associated uh, pages can also include customer testimonials. One thing that would be great if you can get a video testimonial, 30 seconds of uh, how it worked out for them, etc. cetera. Uh, have a team directory bio to showcase their experience of the service providers or the specialists or the SMEs uh, at the business. Uh, smiling faces apparently works very well when it comes to Google My Business. Uh, photos, uh, so some of those images can go into your Google My Business, uh, but, but it's very important not just to state that we have like 40 years of experience, we have been in the business for 20 years because anyone can claim it show it with your team, okay? They are our specialists, they are the people you have to work with. Uh, these are the amount of experience that, that they have. Create a section for them. Uh, another thing that I recommend doing, if especially if it's a high competition zone, uh, create comprehensive guides about the topics that you're writing about, okay? At least uh, view comprehensive guides can increase the brand value and relevance of the business in, in that location to a great extent. FAQs, I can't talk enough about them. Uh, we have talked about FAQs and uh, Q and A's in terms of Google My Business, but it's important that you have them on your website and keep adding to it, mark them up with schema if possible to make it uh, search engine friendly. Uh, white content around investigational search phrases or keywords, like why should we do it? How to do this? Uh, how long does it take to create a plan? How much does it usually cost to do this at other places? Because uh, these are the investigative questions customers ask uh, uh, when they're searching for a service or a product locally. Make sure you write about them. Uh, if if you have the budget, if the client is paying enough for it, okay? We all understand we need to rank for the commercial terms or the money terms or the bottom of the funnel content, but these content will add relevance to your website, okay? Especially the way Google is changing, this will be a big thing, okay? Ranking for keywords alone is not going to help you. 
Uh, okay, that's enough for the tips, the tools of the, for the week. Uh, there's one tool that I came across recently that was created by Mark Williams Cook, the founder and creator of People Also Ask tool. This is a script uh, that you can use uh, to mine uh, keywords uh, from Google. Okay. Uh, it basically uses the Google Suggest or Google Autocom uh, complete uh, content uh, to mine potential topics around specific keywords, and you can export them to a CSV file. Uh, we mine that information a lot. Uh, we look at what people are searching for. Uh, Google Suggest is a great way to get an overview of the subject that you're dealing with, uh, especially to get a feel of the kind of topics people are looking for related to the main keywords that you're trying to optimize a website or piece of content for. Uh, you can even edit the uh, script to change the language or make different uh, root keywords by adding where, how, why terms to the main keyword. Uh, we will add the link uh, so that you can access the script. We will also add the link to Mark's profile so that you can give him a follow. Uh, he, he posts really good stuff on a weekly basis. Uh, maybe you will find them beneficial. The second tool is uh, kind of a Google review calculator. Uh, we, we noticed a problem with most uh, review acquisition or review generation program. We don't usually know how many reviews to get on Google. For example, uh, you pick a business, for example, okay. Uh, we, Say for example, let's let's pick something with a low rating count. Okay, four point three. Davy Tree Expert, you have just onboarded that client. They have a four point three rating, and they ask you, "No, can you get me to four point five at least?" They have sixty two re sixty two reviews at present. So all you need to do is give a add sixty two reviews, add their current rating. Their target rating is 4.5 and click on calculate. The tool will tell you how many five star reviews you need to get to your target rating. Again, it's an approximation, it's not an exact science. Uh, so there could be some variance, but at least you have an indication now as to how many reviews you need to move the needle for your client. Uh, I've already started using uh, for some of the clients that uh, I'm, I talk to on a regular basis. Uh, this idea came to us a couple of months ago. And actually, one of our team members uh, from our support team, Anirudh, who helped us uh, create the calculator. Uh, if you need an embeddable version of it, please reach out. We'll figure out how to get that to you. And if it helps you, well and good. I think it's great. Uh, uh, we will add, you all you need to do is go to sign up, www.signup.com forward slash get hyphen reviews. We'll, we'll add the link to our presentation when we're sending it out. Okay, that's it from me for the day. Open to questions if you have any. Oh, thanks, Neil. Very insightful session today. Uh, I think there's a lot to uncover when it comes to business relevance and local content. We can definitely have a session dedicated to that up next in some days. Sure. Yeah. And I don't have a lot of questions uh, my way today. I think there's only one, which is related to the GA4 migration. And the question is, is there any advantage to using BigQuery over other tools for migration? Advantage, no, it, it's simple. Uh, I think you can do it without, uh, if you do not even have, have a developer handy, is simpler than most other databases that we have used. And uh, Google has an easy integration. So you can move to BigQuery now if you want, if you like it, and then move it to a different platform later on. 
Oh, fair enough. Uh, is there any question? You can send it to me directly or just on the group chat. We can wait for a couple of minutes. Thanks, Jane. Yeah, I don't think we have a lot of questions today. Yep, so I think we can wrap it up. Thank you, everyone. Hope you have a great week ahead and we'll see you in the next office hour. And again, you don't have to take any notes. We'll send everything to you in an email, all the tools that we've discussed. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a nice Thanks, week. Everyone.